when I first added my first full-time data science role, I had never written a single line of SQL. Since then, I have used SQL almost every single day. And in today's video, I will be summarizing with you everything that I've learned over the past eight years into one video that will teach you all the basics that you need to know about SQL. I will also be sharing some of my favorite tips and tricks that really do make a big difference. So please stay tuned for that. This video will be very informative. So I'll have all the timestamps up on the screen in case you wanted to skip through to a particular section. Let's get straight into it. All right, so firstly, why should you learn SQL? Now, if you've watched any of my past videos, you will know how much I stress the importance of learning SQL as it is a critical part of any data related role. Not only do we do most of our data wrangling in SQL, any technical interview is going to contain a SQL portion as well. Whether you are a business analyst, software engineer, product manager, or you work in any role in data, you are going to need to know SQL and it is a critical part of most job requirements. SQL is definitely a skill that you want to add to your resume today. Knowing the basics will really get you a long way and hopefully today's video will do just that. So what is SQL? SQL is a programming language that allows you to interact with databases via a query. It stands for Structured Query Language I think about it like English, except instead of talking to a human, you are talking to a database. Data is stored in tables which consist of rows and columns, and together these tables lie within a relational database, meaning that these tables can be linked together based on shared columns, often known as foreign keys. And now that we know what SQL is and why we have to learn it, let's take it one step further. All these tables that I mentioned earlier need a place to live, right? Basically, we need a way to organize, access, and manage where all these tables lie. And this is where Relational Database Management Systems, or RDBMS for short, come into play. So I recently came across a next generation database management tool called Chat2DB, and I'm really excited to share them with you all today, as it really is a game changer for anyone working with SQL, no matter your expertise. It is incredibly versatile, supporting all the common DBMSs, including Postgres, MySQL, and Oracle. You can also easily import your own offline data via Excel or CSV files seamlessly. Now, Chat2DB doesn't just store data like most other platforms, it helps you improve, query, and visualize it with a click of a button. Chat2DB has heaps of smart AI features built in, and it's like having a magic SQL assistant by your side, automatically suggesting column names and functions as you type. It also has a natural language to code feature where you can type what you want in English and it'll generate the SQL code for you. Perfect for the days where you just can't figure out how to start a query. But my favorite feature has to be its SQL optimization, where it gives you suggestions and performance analysis to help you write the most efficient queries that don't drive your business's cost through the roof. And lastly, Chat2DB has a data analytics tool that really sets it apart from other platforms. Here you can dive into your insights with ease and generate automated reports to share to your stakeholders. And there are a bunch more other really cool features like AI creation of tables, helping you debug and understand your queries. But overall, this only one platform really does make database management so much easier. I highly, highly recommend anyone who is wanting to learn SQL to give this platform a try. I will have a link in my description box below. Have a go, upload your own CSV data and get practicing with your coding because there is no better way to learn SQL than to jump straight into it and practice yourself. Thank you again to Chat2DB for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now that we have our data and our environment chosen, let's get on into learning SQL. Now, I personally find SQL very beginner friendly as it has so many intuitive natural words. I really do recommend practicing yourself, getting hands on into the code because reading articles can only help you retain so much information. Now I will leave some of my favorite SQL resources up on the screen right now, not sponsored, feel free to take a screenshot. These were all the platforms that I used to learn SQL myself, so they always hold a very special place in my heart. Now that we have the resources to learn SQL, let's now spend the next five minutes going through a SQL crash course that should get you through any technical SQL interview. Firstly, the basics, select and from, which form the basis of all SQL queries. What are you trying to select and from which tables? Now, if you just want to explore what is in a table in a database, you can do select star, which will return all the columns. I often do this with a limit 10, so I only pull the top 10 records. We then have a where clause, which filters out which records show up. Simple example here, I'm selecting everyone with a score greater than 90. You can also order your output by specific columns using order by, and there is also group by, which allows you to perform functions like sum or count or average to get summaries for each group. Hopefully this example makes sense. 
And the last critical SQL clause that you need to know is the having clause, which I personally rarely use, but it's similar to the where clause, but it works on your aggregate functions. And this is the order that you should be applying all of these clauses in. I definitely wrote learn this when I first started learning SQL. Now that we have the basics of how our code should be structured, let's now move into some more SQL functions or technical jargon that I really recommend you reading up on, because these are some things that I use almost every single day. Firstly, we've got row number, which is very useful when you want to order your results and add a ranking. Next, we have the case when statement. This is something I use all the time to create segments in my data. As an example, if my score is between 90 to 100, then I want to make a new column for grade called high distinction. Next, we have join, which combines rows from two tables based on an overlapping column. And the most common joins that I use are inner joins and left joins. Next, the keyword distinct removes duplicate values in the result set. Moving on, we also have subquery, which is basically a query within another query. So take a look at this example on the screen. Now, this is really good for one-off calculations, but it's not so good in complex queries. Union combines results from two or more select queries into a single result set. We've also got the coalesce operator, which returns the first non-null value in a list of columns. And lastly, I often use date functions, to help you extract parts of a date or to calculate time intervals. Feel free to take a screenshot right now. And I just wanna say there is no need to memorize all these SQL functions. I do a lot of Googling. This is definitely something that comes over time and experience. Now moving on to the final and most awaited section of today's video, some of my most gate kept SQL tips and tricks that really do make a key difference in your learning journey and is applicable to users of all levels little things that really make a big difference. One of the most underrated things in coding is how you format your queries. Of course, this is just purely for aesthetics, but it will make your code so much easier to read, debug, and hand over to other colleagues. Some of the main approaches that I love to use are all capitals for your keywords and table aliases. This just adds some visual dimension and helps your eye differentiate parts of your query. Moving on, always one item per line. Honestly, it just makes your code so much easier to follow. Now, my next one is controversial, but I will always have commas at the start of every new line. I know some people will definitely disagree with me on this, but in my opinion, this way is so much easier. Your commas are always going to be aligned and it just makes it so much easier to comment out every single line of your code. Another good practice is to always specify which column belongs to which table. Now, this doesn't matter as much when you're only joining on a couple of tables, but when you have really complex queries with multiple joins, it is really handy to be able to trace back an issue. And lastly, indentation. I will always use tabs to format my code in a table-like manner, making it easy to scan down different parts of the query. I will have all my tips up on the screen now, so feel free to take a screenshot. And of course, these are just my personal preferences. You don't have to follow them, but no matter which way you choose to code, make sure you try to stay consistent and you make your code as readable as possible. Now, moving on, my next tip is to use CTEs when writing complex queries instead of subqueries. So as I would have mentioned earlier, a subquery is when you use a select statement inside another select statement like this. Now, it's not so bad when your query is really simple, but when it comes to debugging a really complex long script, subqueries can get very messy and confusing to follow. Instead, you should use a CTE or common table expressions, which is basically a temporary table generated from a particular query that can be used throughout the rest of your script. And you might often see it at the very top of any query like this. Now, not only does this make your code a lot easier to debug and understand, it also uses less CPU to execute as you perform the query only once, store the table name in memory, and then reuse the output as required. My next tip is for you to check your code and output every single step of the way, because there is nothing worse than getting to the end of an analysis and realize that you joined on the wrong column in step one, and now all your follow-on output and analysis is wrong. And the last tip I have before I wrap up is to always leave comments through your code. Even though what you're doing now might seem really intuitive, when you come to look back at your code in six months time or when you hand over your work to a colleague, they will have no idea what went through your mind. So add comments, future you will thank you. Anyway, that is all that I have for today's video. I probably should wrap it up given that I've been talking for the past 20 minutes. I hope that you got something out of it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below what else you would like to see from me. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.